Having covered the first and second trumpets, which line up with education and economics, we now come to the third trumpet, which lines up with the hidden dynasty of politics, with the United Nations coming into being in 1945 as far as the event that signified the point in time when the third trumpet began to sound, and the third trumpet lines up with the third vial and the second seal. So, two, three, three, the second seal, the third trumpet, and the third vial. And if you examine the flag, of the United Nations, you'll notice two olive branches, there's the two, and a circle divided into 33 sections. So two, three, three, two olive branches and 33 sections with the flag of the United Nations, which will provide the skeletal structure for the actual one world political system at the woe of the fifth trumpet. Remember, these trumpets continue sounding all the way up until the true Christ returns at the seventh trumpet and destroys Satan's one world government. Remember, we saw an example brought forth in Daniel 3, where it wasn't until all six instruments instruments were sounding at the same time, symbolic of all six trumpets of deception, that the people were commanded to fall down and worship the image Nebuchadnezzar set up, a type of what happens whenever Satan appears as the false Christ at the woe of the sixth trumpet. And third on that list was the harp, which we already saw traced back to Jubal the Kenite, the father of such as handle the harp and organ, as we know from Genesis chapter 4 verse 21. Jubal meaning a stream of water, and as we're about to find out the third trumpet and third vial have to do with the waters which are symbolic of peoples multitudes nations and tongues so with that having been said let's turn to revelation chapter 6 and find out what the second seal has to do with revelation chapter 6 and verse 3 and when he had opened the second seal i heard the second beast the second living creature say come and see. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another, spiritually ultimately, whenever Satan appears, and there was given unto him a great sword. And as Christ said in Mark chapter 13, verse 7, and when ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, be ye not troubled, for such things must needs be, but the end shall not be yet. So when you hear them cry, peace and safety, and the one world political system written of in Revelation 13 emerges at the woe of the fifth trumpet, that's when the end, that is to say the final five months before the true Christ returns, is upon us. And that doesn't happen until Satan and his angels are cast from heaven unto the earth. That's at the woe of the fifth trumpet, and that's when all four of those beasts you can find written of in Daniel chapter 7 rise up together in a one world political system, and that happens once the great horn of the hego written of in Daniel chapter 8 verse 8 is broken so to speak, and then four notable ones, the lion, the bear, the leopard, and the fourth beast replace it at the beginning of the five-month-long hour of temptation. In my mind, the he-goat is the shadow government of the Kenites, and the great horn of the he-goat is the United Nations, the same as the one who sends a razor of taxes to properly translate that verse in Daniel chapter 11, verse 20, and I believe the global carbon tax to be the razor of taxes sent out by the United Nations. Then at the woe of the fifth trumpet, the United Nations will provide the skeletal structure for the actual New World Order, as they call it, just as the League of Nations provided the skeletal structure for the UN. So moving on now to Revelation chapter 8 and verse 10, and the third angel sounded, beginning in 1945, in my opinion, and there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp. And again, this is the political beast of Revelation 13, ultimately, which begins when Satan is cast to earth along with his angels, but there is a build up to that with the formulation of the skeletal structure of the actual New World Order with the four hidden dynasties. We're on the political at this point. The ultimate fulfillment doesn't happen until the sixth trumpet, and it all ends at the seventh trumpet whenever the true Christ returns and destroys Satan's one world system. And it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of waters. Remember, the waters are symbolic of people's multiple nations and tongues, but it isn't until the woe of the sixth trumpet that Satan appears as the false Christ, and that third dies spiritually. Verse 11, and the name of the star is called Wormwood. This ultimately is the opposite of the living water Christ spoke of in the Gospel of John, chapter 4, where he said, the water that I shall give him, whosoever will, shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. This Wormwood is the opposite of that, because 
for every positive, there's a negative. And the third part of the waters became wormwood. They became bitter, and many men died spiritually of the waters because they were made bitter. How many men? A third of men will be slain spiritually at the sixth trumpet. You can read of it in Revelation chapter 9. After Satan, also known as Lucifer, the fake morning star is cast to earth and that one world political system emerges, it then receives a deadly wound by a sword. But then when Satan appears as Antichrist, he heals the deadly wound as it's written in Revelation 13, that deadly wound to the political beast. And that's when it becomes a one world religious system at the the sixth seal, the sixth trumpet, and the sixth vial. When Satan claims to be Christ returned and the whole world, except for God's elect, whore after him. That third dies spiritually when they worship Satan, who will have two horns like a lamb, but he'll speak as a dragon because he is the dragon. Those two horns are symbolic of the political and the religious because Satan will claim to be the king of kings and lord of lords when he appears as Antichrist at the sixth trumpet. You have to be alive spiritually speaking before you can be killed spiritually speaking so it's no mystery who that third are they don't die spiritually until 666 but getting back to the 233 we now come to the third vial and we'll find that written of in revelation chapter 16 and verse 4 and the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and fountains of waters we saw rivers and fountains of waters in the third trumpet also the second seal the third trumpet and the third vial and we're on the third vial. And what comes after the semicolon here in Revelation chapter 16 and verse 4 will not happen until Satan appears as the false Christ in Jerusalem. And so it is with these first four vials. You'll have the vial poured out, then the semicolon with what follows not happening until the sixth seal, the sixth trumpet, and the sixth vial. So in the case of the third vial, the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and fountains of waters. That happened in 1940 with the United Nations coming into being, in my opinion, the hidden dynasty of politics being globalized. Then we see the semicolon, and what follows doesn't happen until Satan appears as the false Christ in Jerusalem. And what happens at 666? That is to say, the sixth seal, the sixth trumpet, and the sixth vial to the rivers and fountains of waters, which symbolize peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. And they became blood, which means they'll die spiritually whenever they begin to worship the devil. When a Christian begins to worship the devil, they're no longer a Christian. They go from being a virgin, spiritually speaking, and become part of the whore of Babylon, which is the opposite of the virgin bride of Christ. There is a space for repentance, so they don't have to remain dead, spiritually speaking. They can repent because they're not aware that it's Satan that they're worshiping. And this word blood in the Greek can also mean the atoning blood of Christ in the positive sense, which is what the actions of the two witnesses have to do with that you can read of in Revelation chapter 11 verse 6. And I heard the angel of the waters say, Thou art righteous, O Lord, which art and wast and shall be, because thou hast judged thus. For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. And I heard another out of the altar say, Even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous, are thy judgments. So there you have it. Those responsible for all the righteous blood shed from Abel to Zechariah being the sons of Cain, the Kenites, those stones worn smooth over a long period of time. Those who run the four hidden dynasties of education, economics, politics, and religion, and at 666, the Virgin Bride of Christ will for the most part become the whore of Babylon, merging together in a one world religious system with the synagogue of Satan. Satan becoming partakers of their evil deeds, as it's written in the second epistle of John. Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he hath both the Father and the Son. If there come any unto you, and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him God speed. For he that biddeth him God speed is partaker of his evil deeds. So if you so much as wish them God speed, you become a partaker of their evil deeds. What do you suppose happens whenever the Christians begin to worship the false Messiah in unison with the synagogue of Satan? They become the whore of Babylon. Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ, the many members 
dismembered body of the true Christ? It's supposed to be anyway. It's supposed to be the virgin bride that waits for the true husband. Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of an harlot? God forbid, as Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 15. So this is why you see the whore of Babylon in the book of Revelation, chapter 17, verse 6, drunken with the blood of saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. That blood guilt of the Kenites is now upon them because they've become partakers of the evil deeds of the sons of Cain. This is ultimately where the hidden dynasty of politics will lead to if you're not too careful. The left-right paradigm, it's all but become a religion in and of itself, and it's a plague of the mind, which is why it's one of the seven last plagues written of in the book of Revelation. All roads lead to 666 as far as the deception is concerned, so come out of the confusion of the hidden dynasty of politics as well as the other hidden dynasties and get into the unadulterated truth of our Father's word now while there's still time.